Good morning, Vietnam! I've always wanted to do that. I'm not recording yet. You guys get a little sneak peek behind the scenes um, as I'm setting up a few things for the podcast episode. We'll get started in just a sec. Hello, hello. I have to watch this like green bouncy line that it doesn't go above minus nine or else that means London, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hello, hello, testing. Sounds good. All right, three, two, one, go. Energy boosters, that's what we're talking about today on the podcast. I'm going to reveal to you guys this amazing energy fuel. You just inject it in your veins every single morning and you have energy forever and you never have to sleep. That's what we're talking about today. <laughs> oh, am I the only one who makes myself laugh? Today we're talking about boosting your energy, how to have more energy. I get this question a lot. How can I have more energy? I'm so tired all the time. I'm exhausted. I hardly have enough energy to, you know, go to work and, you know, hold down the ship, hold down the house. I barely have enough energy for what I need to do now and I'm not even getting half of what I want to get done and I don't have energy all day. I hear from a lot of people, yeah, in the morning, you know, I wake up, I have my coffee, I have energy, and then, you know, come lunchtime or later, I'm just completely in a slump. I'm so exhausted. And yeah, I hear it all the time. Hear it all the time. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I've written down seven points I wanna share with you guys when it comes to energy, when it comes to feeling energized, executing your best, you know, that good feeling of energy where you just want to go after your goals, you're feeling good, um, and just, yeah, able to rock your day and crush it. That's the type of energy that we're talking about today. So I wrote down seven points that are basically, I would say, all of them, six out of seven of them, so all but one of them, are something yeah, are points that I revisit on a regular basis, even like every single day, to be honest. Um, and then the last one, yeah, I'll tell you about it when we get there, okay? So let's jump right in. So energy boosters, how to have more energy. I gotta start with this first one being about sleep. Number one, prioritize good quality sleep. Make it a goal every single night, okay? Seven to nine hours every single night. You can't catch up with sleep on the weekend. People say this all the time. This has be, been debunked like forever ago and people are still like, oh, I haven't got good sleep this weekend. I'm just gonna catch up on Friday and catch up on Saturday. That's not a thing, okay? You can't just, it's not like you have, you know, nine times seven, so that's 63 hours of sleep per week and you can just divide them up as you please. Like that's not how it works, okay? So make sure that you prioritize good quality sleep. And that might be like, yeah, duh, London, if I want more energy, I need to rest and recover. But so many people don't. So many people bring their phones and their computers into bed. They have every intention of, let's say, going to sleep at like 10. And then they're Instagramming, Facebooking, emailing, texting, WhatsApping, YouTubing, watching all the Netflix things, like all the things. And they don't get to bed until midnight or after midnight. And then you got to wake up, you know, after maybe five or six hours of sleep. And this is just not something that is sustainable long-term if you really want to have energy. And like sleep is beneficial for so many other things. Like that's where the magic happens when it comes to your workouts too. Like you want some good abs, you wanna get rid of some of that belly fat. In fact, I have a client I've been working with and she's like, London, I know I've been training and working with you for the last like three, four years but I'm finally getting what you mean about the sleep thing. She's like, I've been getting such good quality sleep and I just noticed there was like this pooch that I had in my, on my belly, in my midsection that I just couldn't get rid of. And now the only thing I've done different is decreased my stress a little bit and I've started getting a lot of good quality sleep on a regular basis. 
And I'm like, yeah, because what I talk about is real and I don't say something when I don't do it. I don't say something when it doesn't work. I don't say something just to hear myself talk, even though maybe you think <laughs> when I'm doing a podcast, I'm doing videos, I hear myself stuff, um, I hear myself talk all the time, but I'm not just doing it for the sound of my voice. I'm telling you guys because these strategies work and they're important, okay? So number one, prioritize good quality sleep. Get the phones and the electronics out of your room, out of the bed especially, okay? I know maybe you have like a big room and maybe you're on the phone sometimes, you know, in other areas of your room, but like your bedroom should just be for sleeping. Don't bring the phones in, don't bring the computers in, don't bring the electronics in. Have your bedroom be just for sleeping, okay? Before you go to bed, open up the window. Get some fresh air circulating in your bedroom, okay? Go, go to bed and just sleep in your bed, okay? Try not to, I even don't even keep a TV. I don't keep a TV in my house at all, but I don't even keep a TV, especially in the room where I sleep, okay? Don't get in the habit of falling asleep to the TV every single night. You're just gonna stay up longer. You're gonna stay up longer, you're gonna fall asleep later, and you're gonna still have to wake up at the same time, okay? So just really try to create a sanctuary space in the place that you sleep because that's gonna help you get that good quality sleep, okay? I talked about this a lot too, especially in the times that we're in now where we're in quarantine and um, a lot of us are working from home. I'm like, whatever you do, don't work in your bedroom. I can just see it now. People are probably doing it too. It's like bringing their laptop, staying in their pajamas, sitting the laptop on their lap, you know, working from bed, then wondering why they can't stop thinking about work when they're in bed, right? So now and all the time, don't bring other business to the bedroom when it comes to like technology, work, TV, media, all the things, okay? That has been major in my energy. I have been prioritizing sleep for over a decade. I know my body needs eight to nine hours. If I get in that six to seven hour range, sometimes that works for some people, it does not work for me. It's very important for me to prioritize sleep. I prioritize it even on the weekends, okay? This is very, very important and has been very powerful. So maybe, you know, I'm going to bed later on the weekends if I don't have something to wake up to or wake up for or whatever. Quite frankly, um, yeah, I work from home, I work from my computer, and so it's not always the case that like weekends are my off days, for example. Sometimes it's a Wednesday if I, if I choose um, it to be a Wednesday, for example. But just in general, like if you're staying up later on the weekends and you're like, okay, you know, it's 11 or 12 or whatever, I'm not going to set my alarm tomorrow so I can just kind of sleep and let my body recover, or I'm gonna make sure that I set my alarm for, you know, a certain amount of time and I actually recommend setting an alarm like even on the weekends I don't mean like to get yourself up out of bed at the crack of dawn but you know when you sleep too much and you get in the habit of like sleeping you know not enough during the week and then you sleep really long hours on the weekend and you're somehow like how am I still tired you know I feel like I, I slept enough for you know two people and I'm still exhausted so I still like alarms even if that alarm is going off like for me 7.30, 8, 8.30 in the morning is like a really late alarm for me. I probably wouldn't sleep until then um, unless I stayed up pretty late the night before. So I'm a big fan of alarms, especially just when you're getting on a regular rhythm of figuring out what your sleep schedule is and what it looks like. Um, so that way you can get used to spreading out your sleep throughout the week equally and not trying to play catch up on one day and catch up on another. So that's just my two cents there. I know that you guys might be like, London, yo, crazy. I'm not setting an alarm on the weekend. Um, but that's just what I like to do. Usually after eight or nine hours, I'm already kind of waking up anyways, but I just wanna make sure I don't sleep like too, too much, that I'm getting up and I'm moving you know, my body. And that's the thing we're gonna talk about next. So number one, good quality sleep. Make good quality sleep a priority. Sleep in your room, don't work in your room, get some fresh air going. Make sure that that place is for sleeping and prioritize seven to nine hours every single night, friends, every single night. Number two, move your body to generate energy and wake things up. 
Okay, the first thing that we often do is run for that coffee. You know, oh, I can't do anything but first coffee. Like I get it, coffee in the morning is nice, it tastes good, I like it with some almond milk, like don't get me wrong. But at the same time, we highly underestimate the amount of energy that we can generate in our bodies, especially in the morning and throughout the day, by movement, okay? Get up and move your body to generate energy. Okay, on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash London Souza. I just uploaded um, at the time of this video yesterday, a 10 minute quick warm up energizing routine. You can do this before you work out. You can even do this as a standalone 10 minute, move your body, get your, bud, um, get your blood flowing, workout if you want to. So this is perfect. It's, it's great. You can do that in the morning. Um, I also suggest that you move throughout the day. Okay. Don't just sit at your desk at your home office or wherever it is that you're working and not move throughout the day and then expect to have energy. If you just sit and don't move, you're going to end up like the swamp, you know, the swamp, the pond I talk about, you know, where it just gets really murky and stuff starts growing on and it gets stiff. And it's just like, no, get up and move your body every single hour. Every single hour, get up and move your body. Do some arm circles, go use the restroom, grab a drink of water, circle your hips a little bit. Just get your body moving every single hour, okay? You don't need to do this full 10 minute routine every single hour, two to three minutes, um, but just make sure that you're moving your body consistently throughout the day, okay? You can't just you know, do your workout in the morning and then not do anything else the rest of the day, sit and work, sit and work, sit and work, go home and sit and Netflix, sit and Netflix, sit and chill and expect to have abundant energy, right? So make sure that you are continuously moving your body throughout the day. Um, I know that everybody has like different work attire. So like what you wear to work is different, you know? So I know if you're someone who has to wear, you know, more of a fancy attire or a suit or something like that, it's not like, you know, super easy to get moving and do some squats and all these things, I get it, but do what you can. Go for a walk, move your body. If you can get some fresh air while you're at it, go for it. That's an awesome energy booster there. But before you just like run to the coffee, before you just, not even run, before you're like, you know, zombie mode, just like before you go after the coffee in the morning or, you know, that second cup of coffee throughout the day, the third, the fourth, really, you guys, a lot of us are just like, we're, we have no, like we're not fueled without coffee. We can't do anything without the coffee, right? And I just want you guys to know that just being a slave to that caffeine is not ideal. You're gonna rise and fall. You're gonna crash and burn. You're going to, you know, it's the same thing with Red Bulls. It's the same thing with energy drinks. It's the same thing, you know, with, uh, like I said, coffee, sugary beverages, you know, even sweet treats. We, we go after this like shot of energy, if you will, this like boof, this boof of energy, this boof of energy, whatever that is. We go after this like quick fix of energy, right? Only to come crashing down, only to feel more exhausted afterwards, okay? So I want your go-to to be movement, okay? If you need that second cup of coffee, whatever, you know, I'm not here to babysit and be your mom. It's not gonna help you, but I'm gonna say, what I want you to do is first move. But first, move my body, okay? Even if I'm moving my body and shaking my hips and doing arm circles while the coffee machine is running, move your body first. Generate energy through movement. Number three, stay hydrated. Stay hydrated with water, okay? Lots of water, friends two to three liters of water per day. When you go pee, your pee should not be bright yellow. It should be a light pale yellow or clear. Okay, so this is your gauge of am I hydrated or not? Look at your pee. When you go to the toilet, what color is it? Make sure that it is not a super, super dark yellow. That is a, a big sign of dehydration, okay? Hydrate your body, hydrate your cells. We know that feeling of not drinking enough water. We can feel foggy. We could have a little bit of a headache. Our body can ache a little bit. Um, oftentimes we mistake hunger for thirst. So our body's like actually really thirsty, but we kind of get these mixed signals going and we can actually reach for those sugary snacks, you know, the, the quick pick-me-ups, if you will. So I would say, but first move and have a glass of water. Move your body, have a glass of water, get it moving. 
and then see, hey, you know, am I, am I really that low energy as I say that I am? Or, you know, was it just a matter of me moving, getting out of that funk, getting out of that murky swamp and having some water? Like what, what was it? What was it? You know, sometimes, yeah, it is a, a tough day. We didn't get good sleep. We need, you know, a little extra, a little extra oomph in our lives, whether it's a cup of tea or caffeine, caffeine boost or whatever, but don't have that be your main go-to or you're just gonna be continuously riding that wave and then the crash and wave and the crash, up, down, up, down, up, down. Hello, that's so exhausting for your body. Of course you're not gonna have ener um, enough energy when your body's doing that all day long. Stay hydrated, friends. Always have your water bottle by your side. Okay, don't go anywhere without your water bottle. Don't go, you know, to your next meeting without having your water bottle with you. Don't go run errands without having your water bottle with you. I'm working from home right now and I always have my water bottle full at my desk, even though it's a whole whopping 10 steps, if that, to get to the, to the kitchen to refill my water. It's just important to always have hydration around you. Always have an opportunity to be hydrated around you. Okay, stay hydrated. Number four for boosting my energy. Uh, essential oils. I love essential oils. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know I've been using essential oils for almost four years, like three and a half years. I've completely replaced all of my cleaning, personal care products, um, my medicine cabinet, all the things with essential oils. I really, really am keen and passionate about non-toxic products and non-toxic solutions. And so when it comes to energy boost, I'm no different. So I love using using peppermint and wild orange essential oils. I personally use doTERRA essential oils. I love their quality. I love their company. And um, quite frankly, the oils are amazing. So I take peppermint essential oil, I put a drop in my hand, I put some wild orange in there too, I rub my hands together, and then I cut my hands over my mouth and nose and I just inhale, like <sighs> and just inhale as big as I can. And peppermint is so uplifting, it's so energizing. It um, really opens up the respiratory system. I absolutely love it. Any headachey feelings, tension, neck, anything like that, peppermint is just there to save the day. And then wild orange is just super uplifting. It smells good. You can't smell an orange and like not smile. You know, an orange smells so good. And the wild orange essential oil is no different. It's so potent, it's so awesome. And um, yeah, the two of them together give me an awesome boost. Every time I wake up to go, or not wake up, every time I wake up, I do it when I wake up as well, but every time I get up from my desk to go move every hour, I just have it right here next to me. I have my peppermint oil next to me and I have my wild orange, and I just do it, you know, as I go. Take a breath, and then sometimes I'll just put it on the back of my neck, then I have to make sure I wash my hands because if you have peppermint oil on your eyes and you put your fingers in your eyeballs, it burns a little bit. But side note, if you squirt a little bit of coconut oil in there, fractionated coconut oil, it'll make the burn completely go away. Okay, insider tip there. Don't use water. Don't use water. Um, but yes, so you're gonna wash your hands afterwards to make sure that, yeah, it's not on there anymore. And then I just continue to even smell from those bottles throughout the day. So I'll just take the cap off and I'll just smell the oil straight from the cap. Um, essential oils are a powerful, powerful tool in, um, in my life, but especially when it comes to that energy boost, you know? So I get up every hour, move on my body, take a drink of water, do my oils, move around a little bit, kind of refocus, what was I working on? What do I want to conquer next? Um, and you know, having a bit of clarity there too is very important. That's why I love you know, staying hydrated, moving my body, using my essential oils to kind of refocus and get clear again. Okay, what am I working on? What am I going after? What's my goal for the rest of the day or the next one to two hours? What do I need to get done? And just taking that time to refocus really helps with energy as well. Number four, adaptogens daily. So maybe you've heard of adaptogens before or adaptogenic herbs. Those are awesome. They are so, so awesome. And what they do is they help our body adapt to and better cope with stress. Whether it's environmental stress, it's emotional stress, 
physical stress, adaptogens are there for us. And adaptogens give us sustained energy. So where can you find adaptogens? I personally use maca powder in my um, smoothies in the morning, maca, M-A-C-A, not matcha, not the green, green tea powder, that's matcha, maca, it's from Peru. It's M-A-C-A. And that's a really uh, potent ap uh, adaptogen. I use ashwagandha as well, reishi mushroom. There's a variety of different adaptogenic herbs, but those are the three that I like the most. And I take them every single day. There's always a teaspoon of maca in my smoothie. Um, sometimes I'll get uh, ashwagandha powder as well or reishi mushroom, add that in the mix. It's really, really powerful and um, has made a, a complete transformation in my energy level, especially my sustained energy level, right? Because this is gonna be an adaptogen that supports our bodies. It really wants us to, um, these adaptogens are gonna work to find that homeostasis, that balance, and also, um, yeah, help our body adapt to stress better and support our body better when it's when it's going through stress. And so um, what I mean to say, to bring it full circle, is I take adaptogens every single day. They are amazing. I'll put a teaspoon, like I said, in my smoothie. Sometimes um, maca, you have to smell it. I really like the smell and taste of it. I'll put a teaspoon sometimes in my oatmeal and things like that. Um, and yeah, it's just really powerful. It's part of my morning routine and part of my day every single day. And that sustained energy is where it's at, friends. Like when you're not chasing Facing that next fix, that next umph, that next hump, that next climb, and you really have that sustained energy throughout the day, it feels so good. When you know, I always say too, like, I don't know if you can ever find balance without knowing both ends or being in both ends, if that makes sense. I was talking to one of my VIP clients actually right before this, right before recording this, about the same thing is like, if you ever, if you haven't been on both ends or one of the extremes, if you will, can you really ever find that balance? So, so oftentimes I'm thankful for a lot of the extremes that I lived in. Like for example, like I used to have, you know, five to seven cups of coffee per day. Like, I don't know, five years ago, I would literally have like that many cups of coffee per day. So had I not known, you know, what it felt like just to be chasing caffeine, caffeine, caffeine fix, caffeine fix, ca caffeine fix, and then, you know, finding the bliss that is adaptogens and the, the sustained energy that they bring, have I really been able to find that balance? Do I enjoy a cup of coffee? For sure. But it's not like, it's not, it doesn't have a hold on me. I'm not a slave to it like I felt like I was in my past, where it was just like, but first, coffee. Like, can't do anything, can't think anything except for the coffee. Like, coffee is like the only word I would know in the morning or throughout the day, you know? And so I just really feel that, you know, having been in that extreme and knowing what that feels like makes that balance even better. Like, makes it just feel so much better and, um, it's, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling to not feel like you're chasing that fix all the time. And hey, have I gone back to those ways before? Totally. Like in the last five years, I'll catch myself. Oh, I had a second or maybe even third cup of coffee. No, no, no. That's not the direction I want to go. I don't want to chase that fix. I don't even have that good of energy by the time I get to that point. Let's, you know, dial it back a little bit. Let's increase the hydration. Let's, you know, keep our adaptogens in mind and kind of go back to that balance, London, because that's your happy spot and that's where you feel your best and feel your most energized. So it's not just like poof, here's the tip, here's what you do and you never waver from it. I mean, that's like ideal, right? In a perfect world that we don't live in. And so I'm just being real and saying, yeah, sometimes I go back to these old patterns and old ways, but I'm like, uh, no, that's not the way I wanna go. Been there, done that, don't like it. Let's go, um, you know, kind of come back, come back to that balance there. And adaptogens have just been so powerful in my life. So powerful. All right, where are we at here? One, two, three, four. That was number, f no, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that was number five. Coming on to number six, energy booster. Pay attention to how your food is making you feel. Your biggest energy robber could be the food that you're eating. If you're, you know, eating processed foods, takeout all the time, you know, um, 
lot things with lots of sugars in them and just you know starchy carbohydrates and you're just perpetuating this cycle of eating and then being tired and exhausted then it could be that your food is really where it's at in fact i see that with a lot of people when they change their eating habits they start incorporating you know more fruits and vegetables, lean protein, healthy fats, you know, staying away from, you know, the starchy carbohydrates, the sugars, the cookies, the cakes, the breads, you know, all those things, I really see a dramatic improvement in energy levels. Dramatic. And I can even see it in myself too. You know, sometimes we go off the the you know, the beaten path, if you will. We go off path a little bit and start, you know, snacking on things we don't normally snack on. Then like, oh, I wonder why I feel like crap. Oh, I wonder why I'm like been tired. And like, oh yeah, because of the food choices that I've been making or the food choices we've been making. So food shouldn't make you feel like you want to fall asleep and like you need more coffee. You know, it's very common in you know in the office environment i saw this a lot too it was like after lunch everyone was just so tired and kind of zoom it's like the the down slope there and yeah while you do want to make time for your body to rest and digest you know you don't want to like just eat and then go run like you want to take a moment like to rub on your stomach a little bit and just kind of feel that food going in there have a moment of gratitude let your body digest a little bit but your food should not make you feel completely exhausted. Your food should make you feel energized. It should make you feel good. It should make you feel alert, awake, and focused. Point. Okay, so check your food. And monitor your energy levels too, surrounding food. So after breakfast, are you feeling good? Are you feeling energized? Uh, after lunch, how about that? You know, after dinner, how are you feeling after dinner? Of course, you're not gonna, we know this, we don't eat food and then all of a sudden get like Superman power turbo energy and like can't fall asleep. For some of us, you know, that is the case. We don't wanna eat food like right before we fall asleep, of course. But do a check in with yourself, like check in with yourself. Figure out, okay, what foods have I been eating that I realize I'm pretty tired after I eat them? You know, what can I have differently? How can I switch things up? How can I, you know, and oftentimes it's the case that the foods are lacking like that balance, you know, there's not a balance of protein, fats, and carbohydrates. You know, there's not that balance there. So we're eating yeah, super, super heavy, heavy carbohydrate meals and then just feeling really exhausted. You know, not having that balance of those three macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat could be another one of the reasons why we feel like snacky and not very energized and just like we want, we're still hungry, we want more food, we can't focus, all those types of things can really be related to not having that balance in your diet for sure. Um, but start checking yourself, seeing, okay, I've been eating, you know, it's like if you have free freaking pasta carbonara for lunch and then you're exhausted afterwards hello that is a ton for your body to process that's a lot of heavy food of course you're not going to be more alert and feeling great afterwards you know but um when you choose something that's a bit lighter and a bit more nutritionally balanced got some more color in the mix there a lot of different nutrients fiber healthy fats, lean protein, you know, complex carbohydrates, things like that. It's a whole different ball game. Your body just feels different afterwards, right? And so think about that. Make some adjustments in your diet if you need to, right? It's not just, I know I, I, I teased about it at the beginning that I had this secret injection I could give you for energy and for always without sleep, but like that's not it, okay? These tips and tools are real life and they work. That's what I like to give, real life tools that work. You can put them in your toolbox and you can bust them out when you need them. All right, last one, number seven, my energy booster. And this is mainly, I'm speaking to the women here because I can, I am a woman and I can speak on behalf of women and our female hormones. And so this goes with being compassionate um, to my body and my cycle understanding that you know when i have my period or i'm going to get my period i am a bit more low energy you know i'm not going to go after these super high intensity workouts you know and expect to feel amazing during that time my body needs a bit more love i need a bit more sleep during that time i definitely um yeah i definitely have a little bit less energy and i'm a little bit slower just like a little bit more yeah slower if that makes sense um slower to do things, slower to move, and that's cool. You know, I wanna be compassionate 
to my body and um, have compassion for my body and um, what being a woman is and how much, you know, I love that. I mean, I, I don't know what it feels like to be a guy, but it's pretty great to be a woman and I love being a woman and everything that comes with it, I wanna, you know, have respect for that and be compassionate about it. And so I know that around my period, my energy's a little bit lower. So what am I gonna do? Like beat myself up and try to do all the things that week? No, I'm gonna get more sleep, I'm gonna make sure that my workouts are toned down a little bit. I'm gonna have compassion for that. I'm gonna recognize it. You know, I use an app to track my cycle and sometimes I'm just like, you know, open up my app and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna get my period soon. Of course, that's why I'm low energy. Of course, that's why I'm feeling like a little bit fatigued, just a little bit more, yeah, just like a little bit slower, like I said. And then there's other times during my cycle, like after my period, when I'm more energized and I feel like I can think uh, more critically, I feel like I can you know, crush it and go after a lot of to-dos and a lot of things. Those are the weeks that I like to schedule days when I shoot too, when I'm doing you know, workout video shoots and I'm shooting like five to seven workout videos in one day. I'm not gonna schedule it during that time if I can help it. I wanna have it at a time where I'm feeling more energized, I'm feeling sharper. And so learning about that too, is really powerful and understanding the um, our cycles as women and how that plays in our energy has been really powerful too because then I just stop beating myself up so much I'm like ah yeah all right London love on yourself a little bit more what could do some stretching do some more reading use some oils and just come down relax you are good enough you are enough you're strong, you know, just kind of going after those I am statements and some of those positive affirmations a bit more. Because for me personally, this is something I've struggled with my whole life and I, um, it's something that I come back to pretty often and I just kind of have to flip that switch a little bit. Is like when I'm not feeling energized and I'm not feeling like, yeah, go after it, let's do this, let's crush this, all the things. Um, when I don't feel like that, then I start to beat up on myself a little bit. I start to be a bit critical of myself. And during this time, when I'm low energy, I'm gonna get my period and things like that, I have to remind myself, hey, London, you know what? Like, it's all good. You know, it doesn't matter. Right now, what matters is taking care of your body and letting your body recharge because if you push your limits right now, you're really gonna end up with a lot less energy. You're not gonna be feeling good. You're gonna be feeling fatigued. You're gonna be feeling frustrated. You're gonna be feeling tired. You're probably gonna be like not very nice. So let's be nice to ourselves now ahead of time and just kinda, yeah, take care of our body a little bit, relax, come down, unwind, understand kinda what's going on so that way you can better execute during the times of the month that you have more energy and you feel like you're a bit more creative and can go after some of those to-dos and tasks a bit better. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm just like a victim to the cycle and like, oh, I can't do this because it's this or I can't do that because it's this, but just knowing you know, that about our bodies and understanding and tracking it. Like I said, I use an app, I track my moods, I track how I'm feeling throughout different periods of my cycle so I can better understand how my body works and adapts and um, just how it's functioning and what's kind of going on and what hormones are going through the body during those times. And um, yeah, tracking it and being mindful of it. And then when I can, you know, not scheduling, certain things in my schedule when it doesn't make sense, when I have control over it and I can, you know, do it a bit sooner to get it done before I'll start to feel a little bit more tired and like I wanna kind of, um, yeah, recluse a little bit. And if I can push things back and maybe do it next week instead of this week, cause I know I'll have a bit more energy, a bit more clarity, a bit more focus, then I'm gonna do that because I wanna learn about my body and I kinda wanna work with it instead of working against it. Right? So those are my seven tips for you to boost your energy, cultivate more energy, and they're not quick fixes. They're not things that you can just do right now and automatically get a ton of energy, right? These things are gonna work over time. Good quality sleep, moving your body, stay hydrated, using essential oils, adaptogens, adaptogens on the regular every single day, paying attention to how your food is making you feel, and overall just being compassionate with your body, being compassionate with yourself, understanding that, hey, I showed up my best today, 
You know, I wasn't my most energized self, but it's all good. I'm just gonna get good night's sleep tonight, start again fresh tomorrow. And that, my friends, is how I stay energized and how I keep my energy boosted. And that's the behind the scenes Facebook edit that the podcast doesn't get. <laughs> hey, but don't forget to don't forget to check out my podcast, Self Love and Sweat the Podcast, new episodes every single week on Wednesday to help you live your life unapologetically, embrace your perfect imperfections and do what sets your soul on fire. And subscribe to the YouTube channel too. Click that button. Go click the button for YouTube, then go where you listen to podcasts self-love and sweat the podcast. Click subscribe there too. I'm watching. <laughs> I love you guys. You're awesome. Bye.